Okay, so here we have our Embroidery Editor program open on our screen. And I just want to mention that this is a free program that comes with both the 500E and the 550E machines that are made by Janome. So when I like to do a little tutorial on getting somebody familiar with their software, I always like to start at the beginning and just go through the toolbars and what each of the functions does in the program. So up here in the upper left hand corner, we'll see that we've got our little circle with a flower in it and this is our little applications button. When we select it, we can see that we can start a new design. We can open up an existing design or project. We can save our work or we can do a save as. There is a difference and we will talk about that at some point during this video. We can print out the work that we have uh, created here on our screen by selecting some print options. We will talk about that again in a little while. Here we can select the model of the machine and here we can check out what version of the machine program that we actually have. Now under this select model, when we select this over here, we're going to see that we have a choice of two different machines, the Janome MemoryCraft 550E or the MemoryCraft 500E machine. Now the 500E was the first in this series to be released and then Janome did some improvements to it and added a couple of extra hoops and they came out with the 550E. So make sure that you know which machine model you actually are using and select the appropriate one here under the select model and be sure you say okay. And that's going to actually make a difference in what hoops are available. Let's try for the 550 just for fun. All right, the next thing that we're going to see on our home tab, and I don't know if you noticed it, you probably didn't, but I saw just a little flicker happen over here when I changed the machine model to the 550. We're going to see a whole list of hoops that are available to us here on the toolbar. When I hit the little downward arrow, I've also got two additional hoops that are available here for this 550E model. I believe for the 500E there was, uh, I think it says 36B hoop, it's the additional one. Not all of these hoops come with the machine, some are having to be purchased separately as accessories. So we're in the home tab and just further on over in the screen you're going to see that you've got a little button that says style. When we click on this you're going to see that you've got a choice of a couple of different color schemes here. Right now we're in the Office 2007 black. If I select the blue, we're going to see that this turned a little bit lighter shade of blue. Um, this was the black and everything was kind of gray and a little bit dark. Let's look quickly. Silver, kind of a silvery gray color. Here we have an aqua. Looks more like a dark gray to me, at least on my screen. I don't know about yours. And Windows 7, not too different than the aqua. I think of all of these ones, I'm going to go with blue. Kind of like that. Next to that, teeny weeny over here in the right hand corner, we've got a little question mark and this is the help menu. When you open this up, you're going to see that you've got some arrows here that you can expand and this is going to give you full instructions on how to use this program. So it's a really handy right on board. Don't have to pull out an extra little book um, where you can get answers to your questions on using this program. Pretty nifty. But back to the main toolbar, so here are our hoops listed. Generally, when you're going to start working on a design, you pretty much know sometimes what hoop you're going to be using. And obviously, if you didn't own all these hoops, some of them uh, wouldn't even be choices. But pretty much what I like to tell people is that, let's just say you're starting on a project and you don't know what in the world you're planning to do. Generally, I will choose the hoop that is the largest one that comes with my machine. And that way I can work with uh, a design layout and, you know, and be able to have all the designs available for me to look at. Because you see, if you pick one of the smaller hoops and you start opening up, trying to open designs up, you're going to see that if you had, for example, this square 14B hoop selected, um, you know, it says 140 millimeters by 140 millimeters. That is about five inches. Uh, about a five inch square design and if I tried to open up a design that was a six inch square design it would not be able to open up in this hoop. So generally start off with a great big hoop. What you're going to see here on the screen is a representation of that hoop with the grid that comes along with that group when you buy your machine. This grid spacing is a 10 millimeter grid spacing and that is the same grid 
that you see here that is actually printed on the plastic uh, grid that came with the hoop. Okay, in case you didn't know that. Next over, we have our little design tab. And when we select the design tab, you're going to open up a whole way of navigating around in your computer. I'm just going to shut down some of these here. Excuse me for that. What you see here on the left hand tool bar, I also like to call this a tree toolbar, are the same things listed here that you see here on the big screen. Desktop, desktop, documents, documents, design folder, design folder, which by the way is the designs that came built in on your embroidery machine. The Windows C drive of your computer, Windows C. The D drive, the D drive. Windows C sometimes is called something a little bit different. Um, on my computer, it's always been Windows C. On other ones, it may have slightly different initials in combination with this C, but it is the main, on most computers, the main storage place for your uh, stuff that you've got on your computer. It's not on my computer, so I don't want to confuse you with that, but this is more than likely where you're going to be storing your own embroidery designs. And then if you have a USB connected to your machine, to your computer, it's going to show up over here toward the end of the list. To open up a design, we'll do that in a little bit. Let's go back, exit out of here, and just continue looking at the screen. Next over, we've got a little monogram tab, and this is where we can open this up. And all of the monograms that came built into your machine are also going to be available here for you to do some lettering and some fun stuff with them. Okay. Um, when you use that lettering and monogramming tab, you always will be able to select small, medium, or large. You can play around with this. Play with the orientation. Do you want the letters to come out horizontally or do you want them to come out vertically? You pick that first and then you start plugging in your uh, text that you want to have written out here. Border and normal sew are also part of this monogramming tab and they are just little decorative stitches. We might talk about that in a future video normal so again some stitches that actually look more like decorative stitches on your machines typically on your all of your Janome um, higher end sewing and embroidery machines you might want to play with around with those it's pretty fun so back to the home tab here are some monogramming styles two letters and three letters and you've got a couple of different little uh, frame shapes that you can insert your letters into Pretty fun to do this. Um, three letter font, same thing. But this time you get to pick A, B, and C and put in three letters and insert that into your design field. Pretty nifty, right? And then next to it, we've got a write a design, which right now is grayed out, which means we need to do something first before this is available. And what that first is, is that we actually have to have something on our screen in order to try to uh, write a design onto a USB. File manager, this has got to be another really nifty way of being able to navigate around in your USB stick, adding designs, deleting designs, and keeping your USB generally in some logical order for you. All right, so that's the main home tab. Next over, we've got the edit tab. Here we've got some things that we can do once we've got some designs inserted into our embroidery field. And last of all, we've got the View tab. Now, View tab, this is where we can zoom in. And you click, click, click with your mouse button, and your screen gets bigger and bigger. Or you can do the simple thing, which is where we were at before, Fit in Window, and the whole hoop is available to see all at a glance. Zooming out means that we're going to get further and further away from the design. This can actually come in handy when you want to try to get a uh, picture of what your layout is going to be looking like. The design list. Now design list is going to be this over here on the right hand side of your screen and once we've got some designs inserted here they're going to be listed over here in this design list. The status bar. You'll notice that both the design list and status bar have little check marks next to them. I like to keep these both turned on. When they're checked that means that you will have access to a design list. See it went away. Now it's back again. Status bar is this down here at the bottom of your screen. This will tell you what hoop you're using, the size of the hoop, how wide your design is once you start inserting designs into this uh, embroidery hoop, the width and the height of it, how many stitches are going to be involved, and how many colors are in this project. So that's your status bar. Here we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, the color 
and you can see underneath here that it says background. When we select this little color chip, we've got two things that will come up. Color here, when we click on it, we've got this little rainbow of colors. And let's just say, for example, that you know that you're going to be working on a project that is a piece of fabric that might be in the blue color area. So, you know, you can pick one of these blues or purples or whatever and um, customize it a little bit here. So here I picked a shade of blue and over here now I've got a gradient so I can make that shade very deep and dark or I can make it very pastel. Try to match it up with a piece of fabric that you might be wanting to embroider on. It's pretty neat because then that also helps you to get a real feel for what you are designing. Back to this, the default is just going to be a plain white screen. Okay, so let's bring in some designs. Let's go back home and when you select your design tab, what you will open up is this tree or this navigation bar. It can be called different things to get around in different places on your computer. So wherever it is that you are choosing to store your designs at can be very personal. For me, my embroidery files are all in my documents D drive. And if I click on it, you're going to see that I've got a little folder here that's called Bavi's Embroidery. And within this folder is where I've got all of my, or I should say most of my embroidery, thousands of embroidery designs. The built-in designs that came with your machine are going to be in this design folder. When you first um, install your program and the very first time that you connect your, your sewing machine to this computer using the cable, it will send all of the designs over from the sewing machine into this program here. So right now, I don't have a 500 nor 550E machine, and so my design folder is empty. So if I'm going to look for a design, that means that I need to look in my own design folder. Like I said, yours may be here, yours may be out here in the document folder. It's possible you even have your design folder over on the desktop, although I would not recommend it. So let's look for some designs. In this folder here, I have a couple of different things that I could open up to play with here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this center design, kind of big. This is one of the built-in designs that came from my um, Janome 15,000 machine, I think. And it's just right in the middle of this great big hoop. Now, the first thing that I want to do is let's play with some color here. All right, let's pretend for a few minutes here. We're going to come up to our edit tab. And you're going to see that, you know, we can copy and paste, we can delete, we can undo or redo changes. We can do some vertical or horizontal mirroring. We can resize designs. We can change the colors of the parts of the design that we've got on our screen. And we can do some things with lettering and some of those decorative stitches using this arc and spacing section under the arrange text toolbox. And then we've got another arrange box where we can do centering, cornering and changing our sewing order of our project. So let's play a little bit with color. Now, if I select the downward arrow on this little color chip and I hit colors, nothing happens on the screen. And the reason why nothing happens is that first of all, I have to choose the object or the design over here in the design list that I want to change some colors on. So when I select it, you're gonna see you've got a green boundary box that appeared around it which means it is selected. Therefore, when I hit the color chip, I can select the colors and pops up a little window. All the parts are listed here on the left-hand part of the toolbar in the order that they're going to stitch out in when this is sent to the embroidery machine. So let's just say, for example, that I want to change my design color. I've got an idea. I'm going to change a couple of different things. First of all, I'm going to change this dark gray to a white. Oh, but let's first of all talk about the thread charts. When we select this little downward arrow here, we've got a choice of five different color uh, thread charts we can use. And I'm going to choose the iris. And I'm going to change this color right here to, oh, I think I'm going to try to find a white. I don't know where in the color chart this is going to be or something very, very pale, because I just decided that I'm going to change my color of my background. This that's dark brown right here, I'm gonna change it to a uh, fountain blue. 
this little yellow honeydew, I think I'll change it into a brighter yellow daffodil. And I think this one here, that's wine red, I think I'm going to change that to, I don't know, maybe I'll change it to neon red. All right, so I've made some color changes here. And what I'm also going to come back and do is I'm going to come back to my view tab. For my background color, I'm going to change this to a super dark blue. When I go to custom, I'm going to darken it up so that it's almost black. Just for fun. Ooh, wow, look at that. Isn't that interesting? So right now, let's come back to the edit screen. We're still seeing the grid here, and I don't think in this program I can make the the grid go away in the background tab. In some of the programs you can. But you know, it's pretty distracting when I look at it that way, but whoa, anyway, maybe what I did wasn't such a great thing. <laughs> All right, so I've changed some colors. I've changed my background just to show you how that can be done. Next, I'm going to add in some other pieces into this design. So I'm gonna come back to my documents, I'm gonna go to my folder, and I'm going to bring in this little vine. And it's kind of hard to see. I think I probably ought to go back to my view tab and let's just change the back to white because this is, that was terrible. That was a bad choice. Sorry about that. So how about this? How about if I wanted to use this little vine with its uh, little buds on it as a border around this center medallion? Well, it's a pretty cool thing that you can do with this. Now, what, two things that we can do is we can rotate this design in one of two ways. It's selected right now and it's got its green boundary box around it. So the simplest way to rotate this would be, I could right click on this and I'm holding down the right mouse button on my mouse and I can see that I've got that little circle that goes in a rotation and I can just keep my mouse down and I can rotate this however I want it. All right, so let's just say I'm gonna put it there like that. All right, and maybe I'm going to bring it down into the corner of my design field. All right, so that's one way that I can I can rotate this design. Another way that I can rotate it is I can use the rotate button right here. So one thing that you may not have noticed is that when I was playing around with my right mouse button held down, this rotation number changed. I'm going to undo, put it back where it was at open it up once again and this time let's just say how about if I'm going to delete that yeah let's go back and get it once again because it did save it like that so there it is there so I can change it by the degrees over in the edit tab I can say that maybe I want to rotate this 45 degrees so all I did is I just clicked inside this box and that zero turned sort of bluish and I'm gonna type in 45 and hit the enter button. And the design rotated 45 degrees. All right, so I can rotate that one of two ways. If I still don't like the way that looks, I can then hold down my mouse button and I can just continue to rotate it, you know, just to do something different with it if I, if I so chose. And let's just say I'm gonna drag it down into the corner of this screen maybe somewhere around here. I don't necessarily have to fill up the whole entire hoop with it. And then I can come over to my corner button, click on it, and now I've got a little border all the way around my little center medallion. Pretty handy way of doing that. Let's just say now that I've been playing around with my design and I was wiggling things around and somehow or another I got my uh, center medallion off center. Maybe I did it on purpose. Maybe I did it by accident. I don't know. But at any rate, we've got a nifty little centering button here that all I need to do is just have the design selected. And if I hit center, it's going to send it right back into the center of the hoop. Now, one thing I want to talk about a little bit is that we've got an actual design center, which is the physical center of this embroidery field. Sometimes you might have a design on here, however, that when you look at it, even though it is centered, maybe it doesn't look like it's right to your eyeball. So, you know, sometimes you might just need to adjust that a little bit and just be aware of it that just because it says center doesn't necessarily mean you need to keep it there. What I've got going on here right now is actually a pretty good 
a little representation of, um, you know, a design that actually physically needs to be in the center of this little border that I just made. So let's just say I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to copy and paste this little motif once again. Now, doing it as a cornering technique, you can see that it actually flipped it and we got mirror images of it. So, you know, the little buds are facing towards the center. But what if I wanted to do a copy and paste and do it in a different way? Select your design, hit copy and paste. Over here on the design list, you can see that I've now got five copies of that little branch and it still only looks like I've got four. And the reason why is because the last one just got pasted right on top of the one that was selected and copied. All right, so here it is right there. All right, and let's just say, for example, that I'm going to do, let's use a little vertical mirror tool. That means it's gonna flip on this vertical axis. So I'm gonna flip it. And it looks exactly like that one there, right? Hmm. But maybe what I want to do is I want to rotate it. Kind of like the way that looks. Hmm. Okay, so did you see what just happened? Let's undo. I selected my design. I right clicked on it and I was holding it down and it rotated a little bit and then it went, hmm, that's all. Reason why is this little green boundary box that's around your item, you're run out of space because it's it's like it's rotating on a center axis point. And if it's too close to the edge of your hoop, it's only going to let you rotate so far before this corner thinks that it's bumped into the edge of the hoop and it can't rotate anymore. So, you know, these are all really good little things to figure out and work with here a little bit. I'm going to do, I don't know what I'm going to do, actually. I think I'm just playing around with my design and let's just, I wanted to, uh, do that with it. That's kind of cute. And let's corner that one too. Now I've got a whole bunch of little things there. And you know what? I'm just playing around with designs on my screen and maybe I would come up with something that looked really unique and pretty and that I like quite a bit. So, you know, just have fun playing with the edit screen on your, on your program. I'm going to do a funny thing here. I like that. I'm going to get rid of all these green things and I'm just playing around now, probably wasting time and teaching you things that you already know. All right, so let's do this. Let's do, I don't know, this will let me do two of them, cornering them. Hey, it did. That's pretty cool. All right, so now I've got a very busy little layout here. All of this is going to stitch out in one hooping. Now you can see here also that we've got all of these designs and I don't know you know, what order they're going to stitch in. If I look closely at my screen as I'm selecting over here in the design list, I can see that the green boundary box is appearing around each one. One went up to the upper right. That one was again at the upper right. So it looks like it did them in a pretty logical order, which is pretty cool. But let's just say that we had been popping designs into this design field and they weren't in a logical order. That's when this little sewing order button would come into play. So let's just say, for example, that we wanted to, oh, I don't know, maybe we wanted the little medallion in the middle. And let's just say, for example, that all we wanted to stitch on this design was this little red circle. And maybe we wanted all the little yellows and the blues out here, but we didn't want all this white to stitch. Just because it's on the screen and sent to our sewing machine doesn't mean we have to stitch it. So we could actually skip through some of those things on here as we were stitching them out. But let's just say, for example, that we wanted this red thing to stitch out last. But actually over here in the design list, it's the first thing. There's a couple of ways that we could change this. The first one would be that we could grab it with our left mouse button held down and we could just pull it down to the bottom of the list, somewhere in the middle of the list or wherever it is that we wanted it. All right, the other way that we could actually change sewing order, and this is a pretty simple little layout. So, you know, not and we just check the sewing order. So not necessarily would this one, two, three button come in handy. But right now, if we hover over it, you can see that it's just blue like the background here. When I turn it on, it's going to turn yellow. And this is where 
individually, I can go through this design and I can say, well, I wanted to stitch out all the middle ones first. Let's just say that. So let's click that and that. And then we want this blue flower down here and this little frond here. And then we'll do the outer one and this outer one, this outer one, this one, and then the center. All right. So when I did all of that, it reordered everything over here in this design list. And now when I send this design to my machine, it's going to stitch out in that order that I wanted it to stitch out in. Now, one of the things that this program will not do, but it will happen on your embroidery machine if you wanted it to, is it's going to stitch out all of this, all of this, 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 et cetera, all the way through, which means you'd have color change. It'll do green and blue, green and blue, green and blue green and blue, all the way through this design. On your sewing machine, you've actually got an option there where you can make it uh, color sort, which this program does not have, but that can kind of come in handy. Back at the Home tab, uh, we could now send this design over to our USB stick simply by saying write a design. The little window will pop open. We can select our USB stick, and it needs to go inside of the EMB folder. EMB means embroidery. When you formatted your embroidery USB drive on your machine, it created an EMB folder. And within that EMB folder, it also created an EMBF, which means embroidery folder. Your design can go inside the EMBF folder. You can make a new folder. I've got a couple here on my USB stick that I've created. Now the thing is, is that you can only have one more folder. So EMB and you can have EMBF, but you can't put another folder inside EMBF. I could put this in my hearts folder, but if I did that, I cannot put another folder here. Even though it tells me I can, I cannot do it because the machine will not read it. All right, so I hope that that makes sense to you and Let's go back up a step by hitting this up arrow. And let's just say I wanted to make a new folder for this project and I'm gonna call this folder. It's gonna call new folder, but if I wanna rename it, I'm right clicking and I'm gonna say rename and I'm gonna call this 500 test. And I just type that in and now I've got that folder there. So now when I wanna send this design over to my 500 test folder, Two things I need to do, I need to rename it because right now it's just called Untitled and it's a Jeff Plus. So I need to rename it and I can give it a name like number one or, you know, Fabulous Design or whatever I might want to write it into here. Now that it's been renamed, it's one and it's a Jeff Plus file and I can send it on over to whatever folder I want to send it into. All right, so let's just select 500E and let's send it over. And so now it is there. So what is a Jeff Plus file? A Jeff Plus file means that every single part of this is still an individual part. All right. If I wanted this design um, at another time to be treated as a regular Jeff file, we're going to do that over here in our save and our save as function that comes in under our applications button. All right. And um, anyway, that's how that Ba the very basics of writing a design works. The file manager, once we click on that button, we can open up our USB stick and we can say, well, I no longer need that folder. I can select this folder. And you know one of the things I can do with it? I can send it back to my computer. I can send it back into a particular folder in my computer. I can send it back to the desktop area of my computer or I can delete it, or I can send designs from here over here, just using these little handy arrows here. And it's pretty, pretty nifty little way of managing designs here built into the program. So, okay, let's talk about saving this design. Once again, I'm just gonna click off of it here. We're gonna come back to home, up in the applications button. Now we can see that some of the things that were grayed out before are now available to us. Save, now if I hit save, Notice very carefully here that this says here in the little box that has popped up that we can save your work by overriding the original file. Well, let me just say that there is no original file. 
for one thing. So I don't have to be afraid right now of using the save button. But let's say, for example, that I had used a design that I had purchased. And that design came in as flower 624. And I came into it and I changed some colors and I added some doodads. And if I were to now select the save button, what it would do is it would change that old file, that, fl that flower 624 would now have all this extra stuff added into it. It would no longer be the original file. So you have to be careful with save. Save as is typically the one that you're going to use. And a couple of cool things happen when you use save as. Oh dear. What just happened in my program? Okay, here my screen has popped up. And why did a screen pop up? Because this design has never been saved before. It was an original. So I need to find the spot on my computer where I want to save my design. That's what this navigation window is all about. So I can kind of scroll through here and I can say, oh, I don't see Fabby's embroidery folder. Where's Fabby's embroidery folder? Oh my, I can't find it. I can't find it. No, don't panic here. Got a couple of different ways to navigate around. You can hit this up one level, green arrow here in the file explorer. You could come over here to this PC. You know, it can work in a various different ways, whatever you're going to find the most convenient. But just know that moving around within these areas, you will eventually find where you need to go. I know that my embroidery folder happens to be in a library. And there it is as Fabby's embroidery. However, if I go back up a level, I can also find my embroidery folder because it's on my computer. Let's see, under this PC, it's not in my documents folder on mine. Mine is, my library is actually here in my documents D. I don't want to confuse you, but this is where my Fabby's embroidery is. I'm just double clicking and opening my folders. And the folder I'm going to put this in is something that's called to test. And I'm going to give it a name. Now I'm going to call this one right now. Again, I'm just going to call it my 500. Click on the box first. So it's highlighted in blue. That means that you can type in your new name, 500 test. All right. So let me show you this. Before I hit the save button, I've got a choice if I'm going to save it as type. I'm going to save it as a Jeff Plus, or if I click on this, I can save it as a Jeff. And we're going to do both so that you can see the difference. First of all, because Jeff Plus is the default, let's save 500 tests in my two test folder is going to be saved. All right. Now let's go back and let's save as again. And this time let's pick the plain old Jeff. Hey, funny, isn't that? More stuff popped up on my screen than what was here before. Never mind that. 500 test Jeff is now being saved. All right, so I've saved my work, and I am safe to say that um, I don't have to be worried about losing it if my machine, my computer shuts down or something. Let's open a new design field. Let's come back to our applications and let's say open. So the last place that I was at is the first place that's going to open here. This is just a basic Windows function. Here are the two designs I just worked with. My 500 test, that's a Jeff file. My 500 test, that's a Jeff plus. Let's open the Jeff first. This is the format that you're going to be buying whenever you buy embroidery designs. They're always going to come. You'll always include a Janome embroidery file. Here it is over here in my design list. It's one design. If I select it, either here on the design list or just clicking on the screen here, you're gonna see the green boundary box is around the entire design. See, if I move it, it moves as one big piece. Why? Because it's a Jeff design and that Jeff design is simply all welded together. You cannot pick those pieces apart. All right, now let's go to a new design. Do I wanna save that? I don't need to because I've already saved it once before. So I'm going to say no. This time let's open up our Jeff Plus. And when I open it up, you're going to see all the parts over here on the side. That's what Jeff Plus is. Every part that created this layout is still an individual part. And I can change colors on them. I can delete them. I can do whatever I want with them. Whereas I could not do that in a regular Jeff file. All right, so now and then, my friends, 
you will come across designers that will have included a Jeff Plus file within their embroidery collection. And I guarantee you, it's never, ever a real Janome embroidery file that's a plus. It's always just a regular Jeff. I have this little thing that now and then I, you know, will download a design that's got uh, a Jeff Plus included in the file. And I always will open it up here in either Embroidery Editor or in my Horizon Link Suite for my other machine. And it's never a Jeff Plus. So I don't know why they bother with it. But anyway, that's what a Jeff Plus is. All your parts that you just used to make this layout are still separate entities and you can um, get rid of them or add into it or whatever you might want to do. All right, so back at the Home tab, I think we basically have covered the basics of this program. So hopefully it'll give you a good handle on how to use it. We did not play with monograms and um, board sews and normal sews, but you know that that's this whole other world. Let's just say you might wanted to add in some text here. Pick your font. Let's say we go for the script and we can just start typing in and I can say, oops, horizontal. Let's go with a small size in the edit. Let's see if it'll let me type. For some reason, it's not letting me. It can't be converted. I don't even know what that's talking about. Some reason this isn't letting me type in and I don't know why but that didn't necessarily need to be part of this and I'm just clicking these little green uh, arrows in the corners to get rid of things view tab let's put our design list back so that's the basics of this embroidery editor program and I hope that I was able to teach you something and it'll give you some confidence oh one other thing that we should have looked at first of all the print Let's look at print. We've got a design on our screen. We want to stitch it out on the middle of a tablecloth, for example. Let's select our print button. We can do a quick print. We can look at a print preview or the print setup. Now let's lay, okay, first of all, let's look at the print preview. Sometimes this takes a second or two to pop up, but this will print out on one piece of paper. This is an actual size of the design. And this is the one that um, just kind of gives us the outlines of the designs. All right, which sometimes comes in handy. The most important thing here is it does give you a basic of what the design looks like and the very, very most important thing, which is your cloth center guide, which is the center of your hoop. But let's say that we want to look at this in a cool color. All right, so that was the outline template we just looked at. If I hit color template and say, okay, and then I come to my print menu and I say, I want to see the print preview. See, now that's a much improved look. Now, the thing is, is this is more realistic. It will use more ink on your computer, printer, whichever, if that matters to you. But I typically like to print mine in the color template mode because it's just more realistic and gives me a better view of everything. So from here, I could just simply hit my print button and it would print that document out for me. Now, the. Um, Let's see in this wool. I'm just clicking on it to get it bigger so I can look at it. Let's do print preview, close. So there we have it. Here's the print button. Again, I can hit it through the quick print here and um, send it to my printer and it would pop out my template for me. And it's really handy. And this is one of the great ways I just shut down the program that we can get around in our computer. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something. Bye-bye.